Hi, this is section 1.7, linear independence. And we want to look at the difference between linear independence and linear dependence. So we have both those topics there. So definition, if we are linearly, I didn't have that in there, linearly independent, if we take the homogeneous equation that we have here, and then if that only has the trivial solution, namely the zero vector, then we are linear independ linearly independent. Okay, if we are linearly dependent, if we have our homogeneous equation here, then it has a non-trivial solution besides the zero vector, then we are linearly dependent. So linear independence, linear dependent. So let's look at some pictures and see what this means. So if I'm in R3 and I have two vectors, so namely this vector and this vector, those two vectors together make a span of the plane that includes those two vectors. And so when we say a span, that's what we're talking about. Now, are they independent or are they dependent? Well, if you remember back to that grid work that we had where we got to certain points on the plane, taking the, the sum and subtraction of two vectors, there is no way for us to get to here, 0, 0, adding these two vectors together. The only way is to go, this is v1 and this is v2, is to go 0, v1 plus 0, v2. That would give me my 0 vector. That's the only way. So in R of 3, if I have only two vectors, I'm going to be linearly independent on those two vectors or with those two vectors. What do they span? Well, they span this plane that they include. That means they can generate any point in that plane, including the zero vector, but then that's the only way to do that. Now, say, for instance, in R3, I have another vector, V3, and say that that vector is also in the plane of V1 and V2, the span of V1 and V2. Are we linearly independent with those three vectors? Well, now the answer would be no, because I can take a multiple of v1 and a multiple of v2 and get my v3. So I can do a linear combination of v1 and v2 and get v3. Well, what does that mean for us? Well, that does mean that if I do this, that would be my zero vector. So if the three are in the same plane, then I will not have linear independence. So I put a summary here. If I have two vectors in R3, V1 and V2, they are going to be linearly independent no matter what because they're just going to form their own plane and they're not going to be able to get to zero unless if we multiply each vector by zero. If I have three vectors in R3 where all three are in the span of V1 and V2, then V1, V2, and V3 are linearly dependent because I can get to the zero vector with that. So what if I'm in R3 again and I got my V1 and V2 as I have over here in this drawing and then I go ahead and add in of another V3 that's not in the span of V1, V2. So let's shoot it off over here somehow. So that would be my V3. Are these linearly independent? Now I didn't draw that great. Now if I have V3, I drew it over there because it looked like V3 was coming out of V2. But say for instance, these three vectors are not in the same plane. Then they would also be linearly independent. All three of them would be in R3. So if I have three vectors in R3 that are not in the same plane, then they are linearly independent. They don't rely on each other. And it's kind of, do they rely on each other? So with these three vectors that I do have drawn here, I can generate any point in the R3 space, including 0, 0, but the only way to get 0, 0 is if I multiply each one of these by 0 and add them together. So that would be the only way, and that would be the definition of linearly independent. Okay, let's look at some other situations. What if I'm in R2 and I have one vector and another vector that are multiples of each other? Are those linearly independent or not? 
Well, if you think about it, I can take V2 and I can subtract out, if this is twice as long as V1, I could subtract out two V1s and then that would give me my zero vector. So if I have multiples of each other like that, then they will be linearly dependent. Now you gotta start thinking about what happens in the matrix when we have these situations. What happens when I have matrices that are multiples of each other? Well, they end up wiping out a row because we can do a linear combination of those to get zeros. That's what we're looking at. And if I look at one more situation here, I do have <coughs> V1, V2 that are not multiples of each other. These would be independent. So I'll probably start saying independent rather than linearly independent because it just is a multiple. But I will mean linearly independent when I say that. Okay, so let's look at some of the things that come out of this. If we have more unknowns than equations, so more variables than equations, there will be free variables. If there's free variables, there will be a non-zero solution to the system of equations. So therefore, we will have, what is it, independent or dependent? Yes, dependent, because there is a solution that isn't just zero, zero, zero. If the zero vector is included, then we are dependent. That's because if I just have the piece x1, v1, and I know that v1 is the zero vector, I can take five times that zero vector and get zero, right? So I can take any multiple here and still get my zero. So that would mean that we have dependence. Then a consequence of this situation means that if we are independent, that all columns are pivots then. So there are n pivots in an m by n matrix. Then we did talk about span again. Span is the vectors v1 through vn, and then they span a space. And what that means is the space consists of all combinations of those vectors. So if you have two vectors in R3, it's going to be a plane. And if you have three vectors in R3, then it's going to span the whole space of R3. Okay, so let's look at an example. Let V1 equal 1, 2, 3, V2 is equal to 4, 5, 6, and V3 is equal to 2, 1, 0 vectors, and determine if the vectors are linearly independent. If they are dependent, then go ahead and give me the solution. So here's the equation that we want to try to look at and see if we have an x1, x2, and x3 that's different than 0, 0, 0 that will make this solution work. So here I am in vector form, and then I want to put it into the augmented matrix. So here's my augmented matrix. If I do this in reduced row echelon form, once again, do this by hand sometimes, but I'm going to use the calculator and solve this out. Okay, I'm not going to do reduced row echelon form. I'm going to just do echelon form here. And so with this, how many pivots do I have? Well, I have three columns, but I only have two pivots. And so in order to be independent, I have to have three pivots for three columns. I do not have this in the augmented matrix. And so this right now will tell me that I am dependent even without doing the reduced row echelon form, which is what I have here. Now, the reduced row echelon form is even more apparent because it does tell me what my free variable is straight away and how to represent that in terms of x1 and x2. Okay, so this overall is going to be dependent, not linearly independent, but dependent for a few reasons. One, I don't have enough pivots. And also I have a free variable, which is the same consequence. So finally, the solution. Let x3, it's a free variable, let it equal something. So then let's let it equal 5, how about? Then I can solve for x2 is a negative 5, and x1 is equal to 10. So then my solution gives me this in vector form. And if you check that, that does work out. Okay, so this, let's look at this example. v1 is 1, 2, 3, v2 is 3, 6, 9. Uh-oh, do we see anything there? And then V3 is the same 2, 1, 0 that we had before. Determine if the vectors are linearly independent. If dependent, give a solution. I don't have to go any further. Do you know why? And is this dependent or independent? Just by inspection, I can see that V2 is a multiple of V1. 
So when that happens, then we do know that we are dependent of each other. So I don't even have to do anything more to draw that conclusion, but it does say give the solution, so I still have to do my matrix work for that. You can go ahead and try that one and get the answer. So now here is my translation of my reduced row echelon form of the matrix that I do have, and I get x1 plus x a 3x2 is equal to 0 and x3 is equal to 0. So I have x2 is free. And so I can pick anything. And so in the previous example, I didn't finish because I didn't give a solution. For this one, I can give a solution because I'm going to say, okay, let x2 equal to some number. What do you want? Let's let it equal to 1. So that means then that x1 plus 3 is equal to 0. So x1 is equal to negative 3 and then x3 is equal to 0, so that would be one of my solutions. So I'd have negative 3, negative 3, 1, and 0. So in my x vector, that's going to be equal to negative 3, 1, 0. And this tends to make sense because if I take negative 3 times this vector and add it to this vector here, I'm going to get 0, the 0 vector. And then the, this one is just time zero that works out. So make sure you do write out the solution, even though I didn't do that for the previous example. So let's go on to the next example. Let u equal 1, 2, 3, and v equal 4, 5, 6. Determine if the vectors are linearly independent. If dependent, give a solution. Now, first of all, do you, you look, and are they multiples of each other? No, they are not. And so now I have two vectors in R3. So this is an example of two vectors in R3. That means that I have more variables than I do, e I said that wrong, I always say that wrong. I have more equations than I do variables. And what does that mean for us? And it means that two vectors in R3 are independent as long as U and V are not multiples of each other, which makes sense. So this is one case where we do get linear independence the other case is where we have a 3 by 4 augmented matrix, and we're going to get three pivots out of it. I have one more statement here, then. I have describe the set span by u and v and explain why a vector w is in the span uv if and only if uvw is linearly dependent. Well, if u and v are independent, the only way that uh, I can get dependence is if the W is within the span of U and V. That goes back to the geometry that I had earlier on. So say, for instance, that's my V1 and V2. Not a very good drawer. And then I have to put in W. Well, W, if it's in the span of those two uh, V1s and V2, then we're going to have dependence. Does that make sense? If this thing is off to the side someplace over here, so it's not in the plane of V1 and V2, then we'll go ahead and say, okay, those three of those are going to be independent. Okay? So let's wrap up with a few more consequences. Sets of one or two vectors. Set containing only one vector, say V, is linearly independent if and only if V is not the zero vector. That makes sense because I can't get back to zero with just that one vector. Unless if you just multiply by zero. And then, as I told you before, x1, v1 has only the trivial solution when v1 does not equal 0. The, solu uh, the next one, the 0 vector is linearly dependent because we have many solutions to that x1 times 0 is equal to 0. And then the next one, the set of two vectors, v1 and v2, are linearly dependent if at least one of the vectors is a multiple of each other. We've said that. And then this one, the set is linearly independent if and only if neither of the vectors is a multiple of each other. That's for a set of two vectors. And then the last part here is the set of two or more vectors. For theorem 7, the set will be dependent if and only if, so that goes both ways, if at least one of the vectors is a linear combination of the others. And so I said multiple. you got to be careful because it might be just 
a linear combination of two to make the third. And I guess I did say that earlier on too. And so if that happens, the augmented matrix will tell you what's going on because you'll get a zero row or you'll have different situations there where you have more, more equations than variables. Then if the set contains the zero vector, then the set will be dependent. We already talked about that. Okay, there's your gift down below. I hope you enjoyed this, and I hope I, try, I tried to make this really clear because it can get confusing. Get into the problems and see what happens. Thanks. Have a great day.